have more cowboys. We salute you. Show me. Welcome to the show. Horns up, metalheads! Time for another edition of Rock and Metal Revival. I am me, he is you, and all together, yeah, all together. That's right. Hey, we're broadcasting Whoa. live from the Hookah Lounge Studio. Settle down, dude. Crazy here, boy. Woo. I tell you what, you're all Party jacked. Time. You're still jacked up from that Kiss that Dead concert Daisy was show. awesome, man. You know, uh, it was a lot of pyro, man. Yeah, we're more gonna... than you, the weddings. When you do the weddings, yeah. they even showed up your weddings. Man. I know that's. So I'm going to work on that though, yeah. but. Uh, I'm telling you right now, if you don't have the new Dead Daisies album, you're stupid. Yeah, you know? they were great. So, yeah, Kiss we're, put on a good show. You didn't like Tommy, but yeah, I, I never have. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> we're going to talk to Brian Tishy from uh, Dead Daisies. He's going to join us. Uh, ran into him after their show the other night, and he said, "Yeah, heard him, did you?" No, he said, he ran into "Man, him? I want to be on your show again." You put Karabi on there, so I said, "All right." So he's on the show today. We'll talk to him next hour. Nice. We've got news of the weird. We've got. Uh, Talking real metal. Uh, Jerry and I are getting fired up to go see Glenn Hughes this weekend. And, oh, Ooh, the hookah up. lounge is getting ready to be fired up. So, it's not smoky uh, enough in here yet. No, it's not. But uh, I am really about that. I'm really excited about this. Had some friends were up in uh, Minneapolis the other night seeing this show oh, while we really? were seeing Kiss. It's a brand new song from Metallica. Uh, the album is called Hardwired to be Self-Destruct. To oh. Self-Destruct. What do nice. you think? I think it's pretty heavy, man. I, I do too. I it's a nice little ballad, really. It is just it is, a nice little. It's like what was that one? Uh, what that one off of the Black album? One. No, the mellow, mellow one. Yeah. Oh, uh, nothing else matters. Yeah, it's just it's yeah. in, in that vein. Yeah, right. Kinda. Hey, so m- snuggle up with your girlfriend. Yeah. you know. Thank just kinda God. Look up at the stars. And, Metallica is and back. Listen to this. Yeah, here's yeah. Metallica and Rock and Metal Revival. Crank it up. Piss off your neighbors. Rock and metal revival. Better than morning sex. Start with a shower. You smell like you just walked out of a fisting contest. Well, maybe not. But if you're looking for the best hard rock and classic metal, you found it. Rock and metal revival. There's Iron Maiden from their CD, The Book of Souls, at Speed of Light on Rock and Metal Revival. And, and they got plenty of yeah. cowbell in there. You know, can't the, other, beat it. the other night after the... Oh, you can beat it. Yeah. You have a cowbell, you're supposed to beat it. You've so. been beating it a lot. I see you have glasses. <laughs> it's bruised. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the other night after the show, I went out and saw the Dead Daisies talk to Karabi about playing my birthday and a couple oh, yeah? other things. Met Doug Aldridge and uh, Brian Titchy's like, you're the cowbell dudes. <laughs> I I'm remember like, you. what? And he goes, when I interviewed the last time on your show, the Randy Rhodes Revi- Remembered thing... I was in my car, and all you guys kept doing was asking me about <laughs> Cowbell. I remember you guys. That's what he remembers. And I go, yeah, that's us. And he goes, well, when can I be on your show again? I said, you can be on next week if you want. Yeah. So he cool. signed up, and we're going to talk to him next hour. What would you think of that show, man? I thought it was good, man. I really dug dug the Dead Daisies. I like, you know, I was there to see Kiss, but I... See, I really dug the de- the daisies did a great job. Freaking sound was great in there too. Yeah, you know, honestly, uh, you know, and Titty man, he's yeah. just throwing those sticks around. <laughs> I uh, I went honestly for the opposite reason. I went. You to went see to see daisies, daisies. Yeah, yeah, because I've seen Kiss in the last couple tours when they were with Motley and when they were at Def Leppard, and it's the same set list. What? Pretty much, it has Flame been. And Youth. Flaming Youth Flamin was Lee? yeah I yeah I think it didn't play Flaming Youth was new All but right. Paul's voice yeah his well he just he, they're doing one night after the other which, yeah you know they're not doing like uh, a lot of bands would to leave a couple days in between for him to recuperate man because they were just in Iowa the night before playing a show well they, yeah so they his played voices what? yeah five what four or five nights out of seven sounded better than when I saw him in Portland dude before yeah. he had his vocal surgery. Yeah, I it just... It was uh, really bad then. I just... That but was it so, never starts... He never starts strong. Mm-mm. It gets stronger as the night goes on. But, yeah, it wasn't It wasn't classic Paul voice. That was the worst I'd heard his voice ever. Yeah? You know, I and I was kind of... Well, maybe and, it was because where I was sitting. Yeah. Because you got... How'd you manage getting the good seats? You Huffer, Huffer was up 20 rows up higher than your seats. How'd that happen? To talk to John Karabi. Oh, Oh, that's why. Because I was like, "What did what did Red do to have to get you way up here and he get the seats down there?" 
Karabi. Oh, okay. Karabi got me those seats. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, thought, I thought he got you tickets to through the radio thing. Oh, no. You fancy guys. No, no. No? If that had been the case, we'd have been sitting in the section next to you, over down. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, but I enjoyed the show. It I was thought, a good concert, yeah. Yeah. You know, you, you know, you throw out Shock Me, and I think it was a great night. Yeah, you didn't like... I like that he didn't really copy Ace's solo no, too much. much. And if, if he'd have came out with a fly, with that smoking guitar, I think I'd, I'd have walked right down <laughs> on stage right. and beat you him with it. They'd have to fight yeah. to keep you off the stage. Yeah. <laughs> Killing the poor guy. <laughs> uh, well, you know, it's just... I, yeah, I, it, there's just some things you just don't... I don't think... You know what? Eric Carr does... Or Eric Carr. Eric Singer does a nice job. On Dude, Beth, I liked, and I like the arrangement. I like the way they did that. Yeah, with the guitars, and, and I like. Yeah, yeah, because instead of the backing track, yeah. piano backing track, that always seems so fake to me. And I and I and I like that, and I appreciate that they did a different way. But that's Peter Chris's song. Yeah, it's kind of the way I feel like it would shock me. Like if he'd have done uh, Two Thousand Man, or if he'd have done, you know, um, Strange Ways, or if he'd, have, you know, something yeah. different. You know, yeah, I wouldn't have a problem with it. it it's mm. just that you, why take his signature song? Yeah, yeah, that's true. You know, that's and that's true. you know, that's my. Everybody but goes, oh, you're just butthurt about just, Ace Frehley, blah blah blah. It's just for the fans, the yeah. fans want to hear. Well, I'm it. a fan. Well, you're not the only fan though. No, but they've got a, like three or four other. There ones. was a bunch of guys around me. The same thing. When was, he started playing, they all sat down. I was surprised how full the place was. I was it too. It was really yeah. Pretty much packed, except for there's just that one couple section. corners, yeah. yeah. So uh, good for Kiss and Dead Daisies. If they come to your town, go see. It was them. a great show. Holy yeah. cow! And yeah, my my granddaughter, she freaking loved it. Did she? Yeah, she, she got a pick and everything. Her. Yeah, she got a guitar pick and everything. Yeah, nice. So cool. uh, all right, well, good time had by all. Make sure you go see it. And like I said, uh, this weekend Jerry and I are heading to Chicago to see Ooh, Glenn Chi-town. Hughes. Glenn Sh- Hughes. And that's gonna be awesome, dude. I hope. I hope so. You'll like it. You'll dig it. <laughs> you think? Dig it. You think? Oh yeah. Okay. Promise. I promise. You'll All right. dig it. You're gonna go. Wow. Am I? You're gonna be amazed. Yeah. You ain't never heard anybody sing like this, dude. Okay. Okay. I, I, I trust, trust you. I, you. I wouldn't steal dude, you wrong, Brand. No, I know you wouldn't. So, uh, in honor. Well, of the, I would if I was driving drunk. Yeah. But I don't do that. No. I I fly. High. No. Flying high again. Yeah. yeah. I'm always flying high again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, coming up, we've got news of the weird. Did you find any this week? Or? I found a little bit. Yeah, I'm gonna have to start some. bringing the stuff from the radio station. Oh no, we don't want professional stuff. No, we don't. No. We All don't. right. <laughs> so uh, let's kick this uh, music off with uh, Rush, uh, one of my favorites from uh, uh, what was the name of this album? Permanent waves. Permanent dude. waves. Yeah, yeah. yeah you've got it cool down here riff. for the greatest hits. I knew. Oh that. yeah, because because it's remastered. Oh, okay. You know, that's why I, I always do that. Yeah. I just, but yeah, it was from Permanent Waves. Yeah, I is, do that to mess you up, really. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. And I'm already <laughs> messed up enough. All right, this is the Spirit of Radio uh, Rush on Rock and Metal Revival. Somewhere two villages are missing their idiots. The ability to make a bong out of a Taco Bell cup doesn't make you a whiz kid. But you found them. Rock and Metal Revival. There's new music from Airborne, Breaking Out of Hell, on Rock and Metal Revival. Oh, That's that. an I album did. I'm looking forward to. Yeah. Because I, I really like them. I've always right? liked them since yeah. the first time we heard them. Yeah. That, they that's, don't fool around. No. It's always going to kick you right in the... Yeah, right in the rear end. Yeah. I, that, song always, it, that song reminds me of my old don't job. Don't say rear end. Yeah. That's, that's bad. Right. Stay away from that. Turd cutter. All right. So anyways, <laughs> it's time for... Mud flaps. Yeah. News of the weird. <laughs> Uh, get this, dude. This I'm going to talk to Beamer when I get home about this. Uh, dog was elected mayor of Coromont, Minnesota again. Again? No way, really? Yeah, Duke. Must have done a good job. Yep, he may be the most popular politician in America, winning re-election for a landmark third time by a landslide. No way. And what's his secret? Nice. Probably the fact that the dog, he just loves everyone and everyone yeah. loves dogs. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's true. In a vote held that's, over the weekend. That's why a cat will never, never be win. president. No, no. <laughs> The nine-year-old uh, Great Pyrenees won his third consecutive term as mayor of Coromont, Minnesota. Voters paid a dollar each to cast ballots in the election, oh, which man. was held during an annual Coromont Days Festival. Wow. Everybody voted for Duke except one vote. For his girlfriend, Lassie, said uh, David Rick, Duke's owner. Wow. Yep. As mayor, Duke appears on three highway billboards promoting the community. Nice. Does he 
like sign the checks and everything for all the workers. Well, you know, that, he's not the first animal to be print. elected to office in the U.S. No, really? Yep. Come Road on. Trippers has a fascinating look at some of the nation's non-human mayors, including two other dogs, a cat, a cow. A cat has done it. Yep. Right. And a beer-drinking goat named Mayor Clay Henry the Third. I think my cat Lemmy would be a good mayor. Yeah, and he's big he, enough to that he could boss people around. Yeah, yeah, because he'd sit on you and crush you. Yeah, he's a he's a beast. Vicious, vicious, vicious. animal. Oh, just vicious kick. animal. I run down to the hookah lounge studio. Yeah, all he's, right. He's a trained attack trained cat. killer. Yeah. yeah, man suspected of having sex with a van. Uh, the <laughs> van was not available for comment for this oh, story. Uh, talking about so we uh, can't say this. Yeah, we can't yeah, say the, for sure, but. Uh, talk about being up in somebody's grill. Oh, is that what? Is that what he was? I don't know. It says a man in Dayton, Ohio. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Sure, it in Cleveland. Gosh, yeah. Um, where, Akron? Where? Where's, where's Chris live? Streetsboro, I don't know. <laughs> is uh, facing indec- indecency charges after a witness reported seeing him attempt to have sex with the front grill of a van parked on the street. Officers responded to a call Tuesday evening and found a suspect, 35-year-old Michael Henson, wearing only a pair of black socks and black shoes. Uh, Henson was uh, taken into custody and put in the back of the squad car. While officers spoke to a female witness, uh, she said she saw Henson pull down his shorts and then put his genitals into the front grill of a red van parked on the side of the road. Uh, when the suspect passed out in the front yard near the van, the woman called police. Henson woke up and was walking before police came to the scene. Officer questioned him, and he appeared to be intoxicated. Really? No. Really? No, alcohol was alcohol, not involved yeah, in yeah. this at all. Police contacted the owner of the van, who allegedly said he was unaware that the suspect in the van had any previous relationship. Did they, like... Do a swab and stuff on the van. Do a DNA. You see if he finished. Uh, <laughs> you, I don't know. <laughs> what's that smell? Like, uh, you're, you're radiating. Yeah, 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 yeah. Turn your heater on. Your <laughs> oh, that'd be terrible. Oh, All right, man. man accidentally eats pot brownies. Calls family a cat. Family cat. Oh, calls family cat a bitch. <laughs> uh, I should have known uh, they they weren't my stepmom's brownies because no one. Likes my stepmom's brownies. I can say the same thing. A man in Omaha is a little green after accidentally eating some pot brownies made by his adult children, but his cat may never forgive him. Oh, he's talking. The unidentified 53 year old dad said he found some brownies Tuesday while unloading groceries from the back of the car. Uh, oh, his no. kids had driven the car earlier and he thought the brownies were made by his stepmother. By their stepmother, I should say. uh, That is, until he ate them, along with some leftover pizza, then he got suspicious. How does he know? It it tasted fabulous, man, the pot father told the (laughs) Omaha.com. I should have known they weren't my stepmom's brownies because no one likes her brownies. The man said he ate about four brownies before noticing he was starting to feel bad anxiety. He was chowing He finally figured out he was stoned. Nice. He ate four of them. Four of them. Wow. Wow, they must have been good brownies. Yeah. I'd have had to have ice cream to eat four brownies. (laughs) Don't you know? Or some whipped cream or something. Yeah. It would probably help help mellow you out a little bit. A little bit, bit, yeah. Some dairy. I thought all uh, that buzz out. (laughs) Chill you out. (laughs) He said, I thought I had to go out and have another cigarette, so I sat down. I'm having the cigarette, and I was like, wow, I'm really high, he told (laughs) KETV. We put two and two together, and I thought, oh, magical brownies. Yeah. Now I get it. Call the kids and tell them I had two brownies and ask them how high I'm going to get. <laughs> when, they so couldn't reach the kids, when they couldn't reach the kids, a couple called 911. By that time, it really started hitting him. He said, I couldn't stop fidgeting. One of the kids came home while police were at the house and told officers the brownies belonged to the siblings. He also said that he was pretty sure it was just marijuana in the brownies. Uh, according to paramedics on the scene, the man's vital signs were normal. They noted odd behavior on his part, including crawling around in the floor randomly, using profanities, and calling the fam- family cat a bitch. <laughs> All right, the pot father ended up yeah, sleeping. Poor cat. Yeah, poor cat. Come on, I had to see that. Yeah, the poor oh, the pot geez. father ended up uh, sleeping off his stone state. His daughter later apologized for making the brownies, and he said she he had forgiven her. 
Whether the cat, whether the cat is going to forgive anybody, that's another story. Cats hold a grudge. Man, if you'd only had one one brownie, you'd have been okay. But man, you really took it out on the cat. Though. Yeah, I mean, the well, cat had I nothing mean, to do yeah. with it. Cat didn't force you to eat those. Yeah, like, I mean, the cat didn't make them. No, jerk geez. off. All right, that's going to wind up. <laughs> that's going to wind up news of the weird. We're going to end it on a good note. Uh, coming you never up, we did pop brownies. I never had them. No, uh, I, I don't either. bake. No, I don't either. <laughs> I don't either. Not brownies. And I'm not All right. Put that in there. No. So <laughs> coming up, we've got uh, talking real metal. But right now, here's Lemmy and the Boys in Motorhead. This is "Love Me Like a Reptile" on Rock and Metal Revival. It's another love song. Here's your latest hard rock and metal news on Rock and Metal Revival. All right, metalheads, get your kids, get them close to the stereo speakers because now it's time for them to learn something. It's talking real metal. It's learning time? It's learning time. Hey, we got to put on our thinking caps. The kids went back to school. They're not learning anything there that's going to help them in life. Yeah, this is this stuff is going to help them. You're yeah. going to want to know this stuff. Yeah, because yeah. when you're hanging out in the corners yeah. trying to score some booze, you're going to want to tell <laughs> them old guys you know rock and roll. <laughs> All right, former Rat bandmates uh, Stephen Piercy, Juan Cousier, and Carlos Carvazzo are to reunite at the Rock and Skull Festival. Now you did you played there? Yeah, the last, last year. one. Yeah, yeah, with Veronica. Yeah, they, they asked cool. you to come back. No. no, well, I think they wanted us back. We were supposed to go back, but things got kind of messed up. Man. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it kind of fell apart. Kind of spinal tapish. Yeah. All right. Quiet Riot, X Pantera. Dio, Skid Row, and Wasp members to take part in Ultimate Jam Night tribute to Lemmy. That should be cool. That should be cool. Hope they DVD that. Yeah, hopefully they would. Paul Stanley is toying with the idea of making another Kiss studio album. Now, you know what? I didn't think Monster was that bad. No, and I mean, really, digitally, they can do it so cheap nowadays. Yeah. Man, they could... What does it hurt? I mean, might as well stay creative. Yeah. And that's what you were on this earth exactly. to do. Yeah. If you, might as well keep putting them out while you can. But play some new music when you go out and do the tour. Yeah. Throw one in on the new set, yeah. in the set you know. Megadeth cancels Paraguay show after seven songs citing security reasons. I, you read this story? Yeah, man. Uh, people, people were getting hurt. And, bottles yeah, and, and stuff. Uh, and, uh, barricades were crushed and some, yeah. Yeah, was, the barricade, they showed the picture. They were tied together with string. The two bear side. Oh, that sounds like the yeah. security at my birthday show. Like, wow. Yeah. yeah I know. Those guys were terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Metallica performs Hardwire song live for the first time, releases new album trailer. I know people that were at that show in Minneapolis and yeah. said that Metallica was just it, killed it. Was it? Yeah, yeah getting, they, they were getting after it, I guess. That's so, cool. Good cool. to hear. Glad they got their attitude back. Cinderella guitarist Jeff Labar is studying to become a professional cook. Good for Jeff, man. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's good for because Tom Keeper's... Looking to get a job at Waffle House. Oh, yeah, Chick-fil-A or something. <laughs> yeah, you know, I just... want fries with that. Yeah, seriously, though, I mean, Jeff Labar's a good dude. Yeah, he, he is. really He's is, good, man. Good guitarist, too. Yeah. I actually like that album he put out. That solo album was yeah, good. I did. I thought so, too. And then, you know, just, it, with Tom doing his thing, I, I don't think yeah. you were ever going to see another Cinderella thing. No. I'm going to talk either. to Eric about that. D. Snyder says most heavy metal fans will hate his new solo album. I'm so funny. <laughs> You're doing it. You, most of your your fans are heavy metal. Have you heard his acoustic version of We're Not Gonna Take It? No, I, ref- I won't listen oh to it. I don't, God, I don't want to ruin the original. I it, don't, dude, it's Because I know it's going to be bad. It's terrible. Because uh, D, it, D. Schneider should not be singing any ballads. <laughs> anything or like Christmas that. songs. Jesus. No. All right, no. D, uh, former Pantera Just, bassist Rex you Brown. you got to draw the line somewhere, yeah. man, and that's yeah. got to be it. No, yeah. no ballads for D. Okay. Uh, former Pantera <laughs> bassist Rex Brown, who's been on this show, yes. is going to release a solo album. Good to hear. Oh, that would be cool. Uh, Metallica to release Hardwired to Self-Destruct album in November. Looking forward to that. That'll be good. One of Jerry's heroes, uh, Udo uh, Dirk Schneider, to release live Back to the Roots album in October. So he recorded a bunch more except Tunes, the only yeah. way he gets people to his concerts if he's playing except, except yeah. and he said he's not playing except anymore so yeah. his concert ain't gonna be full yeah. anymore. He'll be playing with playing forty people small clubs sausage fest. Thanks, All right. Bobby. Yep. Bobby showed up. And Bobby showed up. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Sammy Hagar apologizes to Van Halen. I'm sorry for anything bad I said about you. This yeah. this this reeks no, this reeks of a live nation tour. 
No. You want no, a bat? No, I don't see it. You want I, a bat? I think he just doesn't want to hold on to any of that crap anymore. No, I mean, what? what is he? He doesn't need money. No. He's got it. He's he's rolling in money 2017 the tequila stuff. 2017 mark my words there will be a van hagar tour really just you think so yep huh. i just do uh, we'll all right see. We'll see. it's a cash grab for the van halen brothers yeah they and, could i know van and eddie can burn through it yeah and wolfgang's out playing with tremani yeah so if, if i'd only i like, the only way if, i'm going if is if michael michael's Anthony back, yeah. has to be yeah. in it too man yeah Striper announces to hell with the devil 30th anniversary tour. This Are interests they coming me. Around here? Chicago. Oh, cool. Yeah, they're well, going to be there. I think it. on Halloween really? or the night before oh, Halloween. That'd be One perfect. Of the yeah. Virginia man arrested for selling fake Black Sabbath concert tickets. Police yeah, uh, so, seek uh, additional victims. So yeah, if you could bought them, um, bought them, you might have got ripped yeah. off, man. Uh, Ex Judas Priest singer That's Tim. That's just us with our public service announcements. Yeah, public service for yeah. all our Virginia. Yeah, listeners. All, both of our Virginia <laughs> listeners in the state penitentiary. <laughs> Ex uh, Judas Priest singer Tim Ripper Owens, Ohio That's Bar. Punishment. And, they must what? have really done. Those guys must have really done something bad if they're making them listen to that. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> okay, where was that's, I? That's not. That's corporal punishment. Yeah. Man. <laughs> they, they did it to Noriega. Um, <laughs> where the hell was it? Oh, uh, ex Judas Free singer Tim Ripper Owens Ohio Bar and Restaurant to close next month. Oh man, I was just I was going to go there the month after. And how long did this? Did we think this was going to last? Mick Brown says Don Dockin and George Lynch are already <laughs> starting up with their bickering. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't take. They, you know what? They're just going to have to sit there and hold bags of money in front of their face and say, "Okay, come on." They're going to bicker until this? that first check comes in. Close this, and you'll get to have this. More of this, when you're yeah. Done. I bet you Jeff Pilson's like, really? I could be playing I could play with, with foreigner, foreigner. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they, those guys yeah. actually get a, get along. They like each other. So that winds up uh, talking real metal, even and, uh, though they don't even have Mick Jones in the band anymore. No. I mean, how is it foreign? It is foreign. Well, Everybody in Mick band. Jones plays uh, uh, certain dates. Oh, does he? Yeah. He doesn't play all. doesn't play them all, no. Oh, okay. Uh, so we were thinking back. We were talking. We were off pick? the air. I don't know. <sighs> I'm not playing this one. Yeah. Uh, I know those guys. Well, uh, there's only going to be 30 people here tonight. I'm not I'm playing not this one. That one. So uh, <laughs> we were talking about the guy who uh, was offensive to his cat after the pot brownies. Oh, and we yeah. picked out a great song for him from Great White. Uh <laughs> Winding up this hour. Next hour, Brian Titchy from and, the and Dead Daisies. Be kind to your cat. Yeah, be Don't kind to your cat. Or cool. be kind to your animals because yeah. one day they could be mayor and they could pardon you. Heck yeah, you yeah. may be needing their pop. Yeah, on a bust, yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> this portion of Rock and Metal Revival is brought to you by... I'd have to say, a sphincter says what? What? A sphincter says what? What? Exactly. <laughs> From probably one of my top three albums of the year right there, The Dead Daisies, and Make Some Noise, the title track from their new CD. And, Jerry, they kicked ass and took names yeah. on Saturday night at the, great, at the BMO Harris Center. And if you're not uh, not abusing your stereo speakers with the new Dead Daisy, what the hell's wrong with you? We have on the line with us, and uh, we want to welcome him back to the show, drummer for The uh, Dead Daisies, Brian Titchy. Welcome to the show, Brian. Hey guys, how you doing? Thanks for having me. It's great to have you back. Last time we had you on the show, we were talking to you about the Randy Rhodes Remembered yeah. uh, project that you were doing, and uh, we were all bummed out when that tour didn't come through, but we got to see you Saturday night, and what a hell of a rock and roll show you guys put on. Thank you very much, yeah. Um, I mean, we're having a great time, as anybody would, opening up for Kiss, and the guys and the crew are awesome, and uh, this is... I like a third or fourth run with them. Uh, do an interview. And and then uh, Doug Aldrich just asked me if I wanted to play Frisbee outside. Because <laughs> nice. we, got, we got a couple Frisbees at Walmart the other day. Well, you know, hey. Um, yeah, so, it, but, it, but it's all cool. I mean, I, it's we get to play really, really kick-ass arena venues, and the crowd's been cool. You know, we're an opening band, so you know, a lot of people are, uh, you know, the majority are there for Kiss. You know, so we we got you know your your job's cut out to uh, get your point across and kick ass, and and uh, it's it's been a, a really good reaction. Well, the thing that really impressed me was is that uh, as far as being uh, you know, I I hate the word opener, but uh, as the other act on the bill, you you guys got the whole stage. I mean, you I mean, it isn't like they cramped you into a ten foot spot like they do a lot of opening acts. 
No, that's that's another thing uh, about how cool it is out with with Kiss and, and their crew and everything. Uh, yeah, they're they're very accommodating and they're we're buds. You know, a lot of uh, us and, and the Daisies and, and those guys go back uh, in many different ways, shapes, and forms. You know, from, yeah. from the crew to you know my, myself knowing Eric Singer, man, for over twenty years. You know, so so it's it's. Uh, that doesn't. That's not going to, you know, change what they offer us or whatever. But they're just cool. They're like, hey, you guys, uh, you know, just go up there, kick ass, and you know, we're Kiss. We, we got nothing to worry about. We're Kiss. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> you know. Well, I thought- last time I, we we don't have. You know, it's not like we're walking and going, hey guys, um, you know, we have uh, bass drums that spit blood. Uh, our <laughs> rhythm, the rhythm guitar player breathes fire. We got some flame shooting out of some microphone stands. You know, it's not like we're. <laughs> they might have a little bit of an issue with that. I think you know. Yeah. Well, I've seen some of your posts. You guys have been doing a lot of live posting on Facebook, and I saw you and Marco hanging out with uh, Gene's Axe Bass. How cool was that? But yeah, I mean, you know, we sometimes we're here uh, earlier, like we are today in the afternoon, and. You know, you're, you're going around the arena and, uh, you know, you check out where your backstage is and catering and you walk around the stage. And, you know, like I said, we're friends with the crew. And I, I, I think Marco was just asking uh, Red Jeans Tech about one of the bases. And I just took a look as well. And it's like, yeah, who, who doesn't want a picture holding <laughs> the axe base? Exactly. Well, you know, yeah. Brian, let's go, let's go back to this album. I mean, this to me is what rock and roll should sound like. Uh, I mean, it's this album is just killer, and you guys are out uh, uh, taking it on the road. And, and how's the response been uh, from the fans, And I mean, here in the States and in Europe? Um, well, I have uh, more of an interest in the overall reaction this time because as a band, we, we you know, wrote and recorded the record together and stayed the same band for the tours, which you know, to me makes a, you know a big difference to to the fans and, and to us as a band. You know, it's like uh, myself, David Lowy, John Carabi, Marco Mendoza, and, and Doug Aldridge all got together in Nashville with Marty Fredrickson, the producer, and started throwing ideas around and went nonstop for you know for a month solid. And uh, it's really nice when you're all working together and in uh, the the you know the final final record comes out and you're supporting it as the same band you know I, it kind of sounds weird to say that but this band has been a different kind of band where you know there's been a lot of members in and out and for for you know various reasons and stuff but now it's solid and for me it's really cool because uh, you know i set up the drums tune the drums but you know they put the mics up we all listen to the sounds we agreed on what sounds cool you know and this and that and and what parts are cool and so it's nice to hear it all on a solid record and and uh you know, just for me personally, because the last one, uh, it, I, I played. Uh, I was only on a couple songs because they I wasn't available to do the record on the schedule they were on with what I had going on at the time a couple years ago, whenever it was. So, so yeah, it's cool. Man. The the reactions been great. So, my point of telling you all that is because I I I guess I've taken more notice or more time to notice reactions. But you know, so it's we're hearing all the reviews are great. And it's cool. I mean, it's just, I guess it just comes across like a, a refreshing, organic, live uh, hard rock record. You know, it's, uh, it sounds like uh, the guys in the band are playing, you know, they sound how they sound, and that's what it is. And that's all you can hope for is that people hear that because it's, it's easy to fake, fake everything out in the studio. You know, it's, mm-hmm. these days especially, it's really easy to, I mean, so I guess... It's easier, meaning in time wise, it's quicker to just like copy paste, yeah, yeah, exactly. Put samples on stuff. You can do it in a matter of seconds. Whereas back in the day, you, you may have ghost players on some of our famous, favorite famous records and all that stuff, and or you might have a you know a more tedious process to get drums a certain way, you know, within the editing and within the sound department. But now it's like nothing. You can just go in and make it whatever you want, almost, which to me lessens the. Uh, the value of all the time you put on you put into your craft and on your instrument i i love sounds you know like like eddie van halen says he's a tone chaser and mm-hmm. there's the perfect example of like the mightiest tone chaser i know and you know every day i have a good snare drum sound around me i'm a happy guy so yeah so I, all that stuff makes a difference to me 
for sure. I've been I was just listening to it because I, I play guitar, so I was just sitting there figuring out some tunes. And yeah, when you listen to it, you can tell it sounds like the guitar, all the music tracks are are live right there. You yeah, know, it yeah. We, um, we you know, and and it's no hidden secret about like oh, there's a lot you could do a lot of editing editing in the drum department, getting drums down, and that's fine if if that's if that's how you're doing it. For the most part, on this this record, we we all set up and played live in the studio and i'd go top to bottom bottom most of the time and get a solid take but there we'd always do a few takes and there might be a another take where you go okay add some more stuff in you know in this take mm-hmm. so we have stuff to choose from or man that was good up to that part but i just totally lost that thing up so let's just take it from there you mm-hmm. know um rather than oh let's punch a verse in punch a chorus punch a verse punch a drum yeah. fill it wasn't like that at all um, but that was also cool because when you're making music together and writing songs together, y- you hear what's going to work and not work sort of as it goes. You're not mm-hmm. like trying to figure out. It's not like when you're hired for, for a session from somebody and they say, here's, here's the tune and I kind of want this, but I might want that. And you go, well, I can give you this, I can give you that. And then you're kind of piecing together on the spot. But this was mm-hmm. more, um, you had the big picture in your head, which is, you know, makes it quicker to do full takes. Awesome. Well, you know, Brian, the first time that I got to see the Dead Daisies, you guys were actually opening for Kiss again at Alpine Valley when the EP oh, yeah. was released. And it just uh-huh. seems to me that this version of the Daisies the is chemistry. a cohesive group. The chemistry is unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, you can uh, tell you're having fun. fun. Yeah. yeah. It's not a chore. Yeah. So but, I, um, I've always had fun with the guys, and even when it was. Uh, you know, Dizzy Reed on keys and Richard Fortas on guitar. You know, who, have, uh, as we all know, for the most part, I'd assume that we know they're in, they're, yeah. in, they're in GNR, and they were always in GNR. It was just a balance between the two bands. So when they knew there was talk of this this year's you know reunion tour thing happening, they uh, you know they, you know uh, they'd be kind of foolish not to take advantage of that. Something no they put they, they, both of them have put. I mean, Dizzy goes back to Use Your Illusion, and 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 Richard's been in like I don't know twelve years or something like that or more. So. Yeah, of course. It's one of the biggest bands in the world, one of the best bands in the world, and it's uh, it's great to see them doing that. It's uh, I love it. I, I I'm really happy for them, and I'm happy for rock and roll that GNR is out there killing it. And uh, but you know, at the same time, you know, basically Doug came in, Doug Alders came in, and um, I've known Doug a long time. He's killer. So it, I think, I think it's like it's the perception is it makes it a little tighter. Now we have five guys on stage instead of six, mm-hmm. so it's just like there's a little bit that just tightens it up. It's, already just by having there's only mm-hmm. five guys that did the record on the tour so it's a little just that, that solidarity from the outside view and it's a little bit like oh cool the guys that were reading about in the press that were doing a new record they added in doug they're the same guys on the tour mm-hmm. whereas like before it was like oh we had john stevens singing oh now it's karabi but karabi's with you know um there was i couldn't do a tour they had tommy confettis filling me that they had a um you know then it was D- dizzy and Richard are out and Doug's in. It was like you know, it's like when some time goes by and you see the same group of guys, it 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 rubs off on us and I and the, the you know the, the fans and the public that it's like seems more cohesive and solid and and all that, which is a good thing. But I think a lot of it is just simply we all did it together. You know, we all knew in January we we're going to get together in February and record and 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 uh, and here we are. You know, the end of the summer. You know, uh, supporting what we work towards together. So I think that that hopefully comes across live and, 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 you know, as the the overall perception of what the band is, you know. Well, one of the coolest things from the other night when you and I actually talked was that you guys go out into the venue and actually sit at a table and meet the fans after the, after the show. I mean, that is incredible. I mean, uh, is that something you guys wanted to do from the get go or, I mean, cause it, I, it's just a cool thing. I think. Uh, it, it is cool for sure. Um, we're on a tight time schedule when we do it. That's that's got nothing to do with me. It's it's really got nothing to do with um, anybody in the band as, uh, compared to how it, it was going on before. That's just how the how the, the days have always done it. You know, when I when I first filled in uh, for a week in in 2013, you know, I I didn't know if I was going to be required to do that because I was like, oh, I'm a filling guy, so whatever. I'm not on any recordings. I'm not you know in a picture. So blah 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 but they're no no go out there and sign with the band you played you know and I was like, okay cool you know so they've they've always done that um we my only thing with that is is that i under i totally understand especially with kiss we have to get out there as soon as we can to sign because as soon as 
kiss starts, we have to stop. That's just the way it goes, and and which makes sense. It's not like they're saying, it's not like they're gonna, you know, come in the dressing room and yell at us or something like that. But it's just like it may, it's respectful and it makes mm-hmm. sense. And people are there to see Kiss, so who wants to stand around in line for us when Kiss is hitting the stage? Man, I don't want to miss the intro. <laughs> you know what I mean? I yeah. want to see it. So so that's how it works. But for us, we literally come off stage and get handed a towel and said, okay, walk this way and go over there. So, uh, you know, you're a little bit discombobulated, a little bit burnt out. You know, if you pretty much ask anybody, you come off stage after playing, you, you kind of want, you know, that little bit of time to just take a breath and talk as a band about, hey, this was a cool thing, or let's get this better, or, you know, whatever, the little stuff the bands do after a show. Mm-hmm. Just, like, chill out for a minute, but we don't. So sometimes when you're – it's usually fun. Everybody's cool. It's like a, it's like all the – you know, it's cool. The fans are there, and they have a lot of nice things to say, but, but it's also uh, – you know, I'm a little bit burnt out, so sometimes it's like, you know, you might be feeling it one night more than the other, you know, so you're not really, uh, your, your mind might, might not be 100% there as it would be if it was a half hour later, you know what I mean? Exactly, yeah. yeah. So how but, was you know, the... It's good, it's good to know that, you know, if you dig it and stuff, I mean, it's cool, it's, it's I know it's worth it, you know, uh, if people are there wanting to say hi and, you know, get something signed or whatever, you know, that, that's your, that's the little time to do it, you know? Yeah. So how was the world's largest uh, truck stop? Was it everything uh, you thought I, it would be? Yeah, that's all. I, 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 <laughs> I mean, had one stipulation this year. I said, if we're going on tour in the U.S. with Kiss, I just know on my birthday you guys got to figure out a way to get me to the world's largest truck stop, and, and I'll be happy. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Was it and, huge? And, 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 and if you believe that, I got some snake going over the bridge <laughs> to tell you. Did, did, did you at least eat there? I mean, because the, the food had to be fantastic. Oh, I'm sure it was. I did not eat there. We walked in and, uh, and it was like so. It was like four in the morning or something like that. It was one of those nights where you're like, "How late do I stay up or what do I do?" And I was like, "Yeah, I'll just wait until until I wake up in the morning to eat or wake up whenever I wake up to eat." So no, I didn't. I just walked around. I was I just we were just we were all pretty burnt walking around there. It was like the middle of the night. <laughs> nice. So, are there any tracks on the album you thought should should have had some cowbell and they said no? No, man. Marty and I, Marty Fredrickson, the, the, our producer, he's he's originally a drummer. I mean, he's multi-mega talented and all that stuff, but he's a, just, I think he's first and foremost a drummer. So when we get together and we open up the box of uh, percussion, we can find places for everything and anything. <laughs> it's like a, it's like what doesn't work. There's yeah, there's I, I like that. I like on on. Some records I like that there's none, and I like on other records that it's there. Like if, I think if I remember correctly, maybe most of the first Alice in Chains record has tambourine mm-hmm. on snare drums, and I love nice. it because you, you would just not associate that with Alice in Chains, but it does something to the groove, you know. And and uh, so yeah, we just take we just go song by song. There's there's some uh, there's some there's definitely a few cowbells. I think there's a, or no, now, now I'm thinking about it. There might have been we might have been going through a bunch of shakers and tambourines and yeah. Yeah, all saw. this stuff and then we were like, "Hey man, we haven't put a cowbell in." And at the end of one of the songs, I think it's a song called um um it's all the same way. What mm-hmm. is it? Uh, so all the same. I think at the end it goes into a riff jam kind of thing and we're like, "We that's we got to put some cowbell in there. We got to get that going." So when, yeah, yeah, I, I I love cowbell. I wish I was. I, I wish it was a little bit more my thing because I love the old like the, the Peter Chris and the, oh yeah, the, the, um, in the, the drum the, solo. Peter Chris, the the Quirky Lang, the Steven Adler. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. The, the Alex Van Halen. Man, you give me a good cow. I love it. Yeah. And, and I wish I had a cowbell <laughs> intro on this record. Now that I think about it, it's like I wish there was like one of those cool dance night away. <laughs> I got a, we got there a cowbell. Go. <laughs> yeah, our show would suck if we didn't have cowbell. Yeah, we have I, to put I, it on I, everything. Like, that sounds great. I mean, like Mississippi Queen, it's one of the <laughs> most mightiest things ever. That cowbell exactly. just sets you up like for the massive riff. It's awesome. Yeah. The Amer- American okay. band from... Uh, yeah. yeah, you from gotta Grand- have it. Yeah, you gotta have if it. If you don't huh? have it, you can't play it. Yeah, and Karabi says that he's gonna write a song called Cowbell Blues that's nothing but cowbell. You so, know, it wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if he's in in the in the the venue right now working on it. Yeah, because he says <laughs> that would be a number one hit here in Wisconsin, and he thinks that would be huge. But uh, well, you know, people love cowbells, man, and you know, especially in your part of the world. That's uh, right. Yeah. yeah, we all we all have them here. Yeah. So I it, mean, come on, man. would calling Doctor Love be the same without that cowbell coming in on Rock and Roll Over? It's awesome. Oh, no, nah. it's gotta have it. We actually, you know, we we always ask that question, but seriously. We do love the cowbell. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and, and and let's think about this 
for, for I've never thought about this till now. You got okay. You you put on rock and roll over. You got I want you and take me. Okay, they they're both awesome. Then you go to calling Doctor Love. You got the cowbell in there. Great song, great drum track. I love it. Peter. Then they go to ladies room, and every mm-hmm. time they get into that chorus, he kicks you a bit the cowbell. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they the band literally stops for Pete to go tonk 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 yeah. tonk. Dugga, 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 dugga. <laughs> Yeah. Like, so he's so my my point is there's back to back cowbell on Rock and Roll Over. I, I'm wondering like where else is back to back cowbell? Like does Alex Van ha- Halen have any back to back cowbell? Hmm. You know what hmm. I mean? I don't know. That sh- we'll have to put out you, a you know what? Yeah, you make you, a poll. You might have to maybe Do Eric. I don't. Research. I didn't. I didn't really hear Eric hitting it the other night that hard either. Oh huh? really? Yeah. You got to tell him to hit it. Tell him to hit it harder. Turn yeah, the mic yeah, up. yeah. Turn yeah. the mic up, Eric. Well, hey, Brian, we know you're busy and you're on tour, and we appreciate all the time that you've given us today. And uh, we're going to play another track off Make Some Noise. And I'm I'm not bullshit, and I'm not saying it because you're sitting here. This is one of my top couple albums of the year, if not my favorite album of the year. I can't take it out of my player. And well, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm thank you, thanks a lot. And let me let me ask you this: what what you know, we I've you know, you get in your little bubble, you're in your band, mm-hmm. and, you know, you read nice stuff, and people are, you know, you have your the fan base going on, and and it can be uh, a little deceiving. You know, you start to go, uh, you know, you can take a step out, and you go, well, wait, there's a ton of bands out there working it. There's a ton mm-hmm. of bands. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of great bands out there, and everybody's got their fans, and everybody get you know, gets some nice reviews about their live shows and their records and stuff. So it's like, it's... So when we're reading this, I'm like, that's really cool. It's like, am I just reading this because the people were fans to begin with, or is there actually something there that you know we did, you know, that we hit on that that is resonating, you know? So, so I'm asking you, what 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 makes it, what you know, what makes you say that? Well, kind this of stuff? okay, I'll, it'll be, I'll be real honest with you. I'm a fan of true blues driven, guitar driven rock and roll. A young and young Aerosmith. I love Aerosmith. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and this reminds me of this generation's version of a young, hungry Aerosmith. The the screaming guitars, the the great rhythm section, and and John's vocals. It there's nothing, nothing phony, no bullshit. It's straight ahead rock and roll, and you know it, there's nothing fake about it. Do you know what I mean? It is a true rock and roll record. You know, it, oh, cool. it, it's yeah. it's not metal. It's not. You know, it's not. I, you don't categorize it. It is rock and roll. It is what it is. I'm, oh, cool! Thanks. I'm a yeah, fan I, I, of the I, songwriting. I think. Yeah. The, I think the lyrics. You know, the most of the time they're telling stories, which is what I love. I want to hear so something besides yeah, "Ooh, I, baby, I, la I, la la" bullshit. I want to hear something that means something, and you guys do that, which is what yeah. you know what it's supposed to be about. Well, I'll give mo- most of that credit goes to John Crowley because he would sit around with our, with with uh, you know, d- demos of the songs, you know, or, or we'd be cutting tracks and he'd be singing along with us, singing ideas and stuff. But then he'd take like the the demo of like a a a, a, a take that is in a good place, you know, a decent version of what we did, and he'd just sit there in the other room with it and be jotting down ideas and for hours and hours going and going. And I'd, I'd walk in time time and time again and be like, hey, Jesse. Check this out. What do you think of this? He'd sit mm-hmm. down, look at his laptop, and he'd, he'd read me the lyrics and or sing along or whatever. But and I was like, it was always good. It was always. And I was like, the more I was around that, the more I was like, John has his vibe, and he knows what he knows what he's doing. He knows what he wants, and mm-hmm. and and uh, it really fits the music. I think he did a great job. But that that with with that, it's also because we're all kind of cut from the same cloth. You know, we we all are are all too familiar with our old. Zeppelin, Aerosmith, and John mm-hmm. Grand Funk, mm-hmm. and the old Van Halen, and the ACDC. You know, it's like we all come from that stuff. So, so it, I wasn't ever really worried, but at the same time, I never had to think about you know John Carabi's a lyricist. I was never in, in a band with him. So, uh, but it was pleasing and uh, to to watch him, you know, uh, get it all together as we were recording all the songs and stuff. So yeah, he he did a great job, and I you know and I kind of went through a bunch of songs recently. And I was like, man, he really, he really just sounds, he just sounds like a, he's just a, got a killer, he's got a, that kind of classic rock voice, and there's exactly. not so many yep. guys out there like that, but that's where he comes from. So, you know, when people talk about, oh, man, we need a singer that's kind of like this and that, like those classic guys, and you go, wait a second, mm-hmm. Dick Crabby's here right now, that's, that's what he eats, lives <laughs> and him, breathes, man. you know what I mean? That's like, you don't find many of those guys around now, there's just not that many, and 
And the further down the road of rock and roll we get, the further we get away from the original blues, which is the stuff that Daltrey and Plant and and in all the guys back then, Paul Rogers, they they all came from that. Exactly. You know what I mean? And 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 then they made it into what we all grew up on. And then mm-hmm. you know, then there's kids that grew up on Nirvana and Metallica that maybe didn't dig as deep in the in the past. But man, if that's 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 the power, that's the most powerful shit that everything yeah. lays upon after that. You know, so. You know, if there's a lesson to be learned, it's like, man, if you go listen to some old Zeppelin and go listen to Live at Leeds and go listen to some free, you know, yeah. and all that, man, because that's, go, you know, go listen to that stuff. It's really, man, I, it hasn't been done as good since, even though there's some killer bands out there. It's just, man, they were the, they're the masters. Exactly, exactly. Well, we're going to play another track off the, off the uh, Make Some Noise album, which, like I said, from top to bottom, I love. And you picked out... Last time I saw the sun. What Good story? Yeah, yeah. What's the? Yeah. What? Why did you pick that one, Brian? Uh, the only reason I picked that, I, I don't particularly like the song. It's just because I came with the title, so I want to brag about that. <laughs> nice. Went over good live. Uh, no, no, I do. I really do like the song. It's so Aerosmithonian, if you, uh, you know. Yeah. What, yeah. You know what I mean? Just... But, but uh, no, it was a, uh, it was a joke. It was kind of I, I was outside with Dizzy last year on tour and the middle of the night and I was like we just stand there as <laughs> you're in Europe and it's dark all the time and I'm like man I don't know the last time I saw the sun and and then I was like dude that's a title last time I saw the sun we went in grabbed acoustic guitars and we had one of these like kind of power ballads <laughs> like last time yeah. I saw the sun, whatever and uh and we, it sat there but totally whatever forgot about it months later and then somehow Karabi remembered it or something and uh when we were making the record I started a joke Every every time they'd have a song idea, I was like, "Oh man, that should be called Last Time I Saw the Sun." For every song, so every time they come up with something, I was I, I would try and sing that phrase over it. And either I bothered John so much that he just said, "Okay, screw it, let's call this one Last Time I Saw the Sun," or it actually worked. I can't remember which, but yeah. And then he just took the ly- he took the title, and that's that was one place where he literally he just took the title and wrote lyrics based on what his uh, idea of what the, the title meant, you know, which was pretty simple, just life on the road, you know, just that, that's it, you know. But <laughs> I, I really liked what he did with it, and I thought the song came out really cool in, in that old school, like Aerosmith Rocks, Toys in the Attic era kind of way. You For know? sure. Very yeah. cool. Well, Ryan, we're going to let you get into play Frisbee with uh, Doug Aldridge in the park, but we appreciate your time, and anything the Dead Daisies needs played on this show, they are more than welcome here at Rock and Metal Revival. Cool. Well, th- thanks for the interest. Thanks for digging the the the, um, the new record and for playing some tunes off it. And uh, hopefully, uh, we'll be back in your neck of the woods for another show. There's Queens Rank from the CD Condition Human, and that is Guardian on uh, Rock and Metal Revival. Dig that. I, I like, like that, that album, man. That was in my top. That was like one of top album, wasn't it? Yeah. Last year? Yeah, it was. I think it was. Yeah. Yeah, right Queen, Queen's Rank out on the road. Hey, I just got the new Jeff Tate Operation Mind Crime, and I know we've been hating on him for a while. Yeah. But, dude, I got to let you, you listen to it? this. Yeah. yeah. I, I, gotta... uh, I just, I like the way Queen's Rank is doing it now, where it's a lot of versatility to yeah. it. There's a lot of different. I think, you, I think you'll like this. I, I, right. I'll, I'll give it a listen. Yeah. I'll and, give it a listen. And Jeff might be our guest next week. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Right. I, I was well, talking to his publicist today, and he doesn't hate us, so. I'll give it a listen. Yeah, we'll, we'll give it a listen. He obviously doesn't listen. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't listen. Yeah, I didn't hear the crap we said. Well, yeah. All right, but so. But, no, I've always loved, he's always been a great singer. Yeah. Man. I just hate just he, not like, as it's like he as fell he off the edge there for a while, man. Yeah, you yeah. Know? He and, just want he wants to go in a different direction. Yeah. So I don't. That's and fine with me. Good for him. You know. Um, all right. So let me see here. Uh, we want to thank Brian Titchy. Yeah, that was cool. I just want to thank the whole Dead Daisies for kicking our ass last yeah, Saturday. Yeah, that was a good show, man. Um, looking forward to hanging out with uh, Glenn Hughes this weekend. Yeah, I think I'm going to cool. pass on the Ace Freely. I want to go see Ace Freely, but I think Glenn Hughes and Ace Freely in the same weekend is yeah, going to be a little bit of this. day after, right after the a lot one of right cash. after the other. Yeah. back to Chicago. You but, might as well uh, just stay there. That's a cool poster that they gave us. Yeah, you yeah, know, got a cool poster signed from the Dead Daisies. We'll put it up here in the Hookah Lounge Studios. We want to thank uh, all of our. Uh, uh, affiliates, we want to thank Mega Rock Radio, Uncontrolled Noise. That guy, what's his name, Corey? Cor- yeah, I think Corey, Craig, something. Yeah, someone K. Corey, I'm going to let you know when the birthday party uh, is going to happen, so you can get your ass down here and party with us. Woohoo! So yeah, uh, you get a. He can play. Have Corey. Open. Does Corey play? 
I don't know. We should make him. Yeah, we should get him get up and sing something. He can just maybe like the sync. gambler or something from Kenny sync. Rogers. He can just lip sync some karaoke. Yeah, stuff. if he's going to refuse to trim your hedge. Yeah, I mean, I mean yeah. he keep, went right by, didn't even yeah. stop. No, yeah. never even stopped sauce when he no. came through. No, see how he is. Yeah, L- at least you know when Chris Aiken comes to town, he calls us. Yeah, and you he know, says, "Hey, hey I'm in town. I'm town. We're at the, I'm at the bar. Yeah. Stop out and see me." Don't, don't I sound closer? Yeah. <laughs> So, but we want to thank Corey at Uncontrolled Noise and then Coonsy and everybody at Rock Rage Radio. Uh, big horns up to you guys. Horns a- up. And uh, also, thank you to The Hog, 105.9 The Hog in Janesville. Uh, Hopefully you heard this in order. Yeah. If we start right after this, it's, yeah. it's not our yeah, deal. Yeah, it's not our, not our deal. Yeah. We're not the ones, yeah. <laughs> we, We're not at the helm anymore. We, we, it's supposed to be in order. <laughs> yeah, you can always listen to the, you can, uh, you can listen to the show on uh, 105.9 the hog.com awesome so if you're uh yeah tune in radio tune in radio app it's and, yeah get your rock rage radio app just listen to us whenever you yeah, can you can check you know, us out on spreaker we've yeah, got make a our, bunch of interviews and yeah. stuff on spreaker make our families proud of us will you yeah yeah i mean they really, keep, they come keep on, talking we'll... rotten about us at the family reunions <laughs> all right so we're getting the heck on out of here and uh as we always say as we leave the hookah lounge studios remember don't drink and drive smoke and fly peace This brings to an end another edition of Rock and Metal Revival. If you enjoyed it, tell a friend. If you didn't, tell two. Until next time, this is Rock and Metal Revival. I said, who wants to fucking touch me? To catch the whole show of Rock and Metal Revival, all you have to do is check it out on these affiliates. Mega Rock Radios on Saturdays from 11 a.m. Eastern Time and on Uncontrolled Noise Tuesdays at 1 a.m., Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and on Saturday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern on uncontrollednoise.com. And make sure that you leave them a message and tell them that you found Rock and Metal Revival on their stations.